So hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is Mommy Chrisley. And ito pong vlog kung ito ay ginawa ko uh, for uh, part 2 ng ating low-lying placenta journey. Kasi po, um, I feel so overwhelmed sa lahat po ng mga momshies out there na nag-subscribe. At patuloy pa rin po nag-subscribe sa aking YouTube channel. So, tayo po ay uh, road to 600 lang naman po. But I'm still very thankful. So, in this vlog po, i-discuss ko... And sasagutin ko kung ano yung mga uh, mostly tinatanong sa aking YouTube channel. And I will show in this vlog kung ano po yung mga tanong yun at kung ano po yung pwede kong uh, maibigay na solution or uh, advice with regards to, the quest to those questions. So, please be with me po. Uh, disclaimer lang, hindi po ako isang doktor. I'm not an obstetrician. Isa po akong nurse. But most importantly, I am a mother. At isa po ako sa mga naka-experience ng isa sa mga common pregnancy complication. Ang tinatawag natin low-lying placenta, placenta previa. So, let's begin. So, para po sa ating first question, so, basahin ko na lang po, pero in lagay ko din dito, is from Miss Sherlyn Agbon. So, I found out I have low-lying placenta at 20 weeks, and now at 35 weeks, uh, my placenta is still posterior grade 2. I regretted the times that I haven't been too careful. I exercise, walk, and work at times. Siguro kung nakita ko to earlier at nag-watch pa ako ng mga ibang tips uh, para mas mapataas pa ang placenta ko. Sana mag-migrate pa to for the remaining gestation. Thanks for sharing your experience. So, thank you, Miss Sherlyn for uh, acknowledging and for appreciating my uh, my vlog. Actually po, I think uh, what I can answer from this question is yung mga posterior and grade 2 things about uh, placenta, no? Placenta previa and lulayang placenta. So, uh, basically po kasi uh, what is the importance of our placenta? Placenta na sa Tagalog ay inunan. So yung inunan po kasi natin yung placenta ang, ang nagsisilbing nagbibigay ng nutrients and oxygen sa ating baby sa loob na ating sinapupunan. So may different attachments po kasi it could be anterior or posterior. So Anterior means kapag yung pong placenta natin is naka-attach sa front ng ating chan, ng ating stomach. Uh, whereas naman po kapag posterior placenta, so the placenta naman is attached to the back of our uterus na near sa ating spine. So for me po kasi, it doesn't matter kung naka-attach ba yan anterior or posterior, no? Ang... Um, um, much of importance po kasi na dapat natin i-consider is yung implantation ng ating placenta. If it's uh, low ba or uh, malayo, mataas, mababa sa ating cervix. Yes, that's the important thing that you always have to to look uh, into. Like, um, kung halimbawa po na na diagnosed kayo with low-lying placenta or placenta previa, uh, you have to know what are those grades. Apo. Meron kasi tayong four grading. Ito naman po yung base sa aking research. Mm -hmm. So, yung grade mo, uh, this is what you call the minor one, is yung placenta natin covers upper part of the uterus, but some of it extends sa lower part noon. That is grade one. Like this. So, sa grade 2 naman is what you call yung marginal. So, yung placenta natin reaches the cervix. Na reach niya cervix pero it doesn't, it does not cover it. That is grade 2. So, for grade 3 naman, the placenta partially covers. So, partially, partially nakocover niya yung cervix sa grade 3. Um, however, kapag naman na reach po natin yung grade 4 or yung this is what we commonly call as the uh, placenta previa totalis. Mm -mm, yun po yun. Ito yung talaga yung major, major classification ng ating uh, 
uh, placenta preview kung saan talagang uh, na-cover ng placenta uh, totally yung ating cervix. And this, um, we should always be reminded kapag na-reach natin itong, itong classification na to, we are very high risk for bleeding. So, are we clear yun po yung for grading ng ating placenta previa? Uh, according po kay Miss Kylar, so, mababa din po ang placenta ko. Galing lang ako sa OB ko kanina. Bed rest daw po, 30 years old here. So, okay. So, si Ma'am Skylar po ay 30 years old. And then, mababa din po ang kanyang placenta. And advice sa kanya ng doctor is mag bed rest. So, what can I say about this? Um, follow your doctor's advice. Um, most common advice po kasi na ibinibigay talaga sa mga nakakaranas ng low-line placenta, placenta previa is to give yourself uh, a really good rest, a bed rest, um, basically. At saka, uh, pag sinabi sa inyo talaga na magpahinga kayo, don't uh, engage yourself to those activities na alam nyo may stress kayo. You have to free your mind from all the negativities kasi stress could also lead to, ano, uh, bleeding, lalo na kung meron kayong low-lying plus. According naman kay mm, ito, very common tong mga tong tanong ni Miss uh, recent lang, two weeks ago. Miss Jazel Lomoljo yeah, so, I'm 34 weeks pre, uh, placenta previa grade 2. Ayan nga po, grade 2. May, possible, may possibility pa ba for vaginal birth? So, salamat mom. So, to answer this question, so, since uh, ang kanya pong classification is grade 2, so, it means yung placenta niya reaches, uh, uh, reaches the cervix pero hindi naman pa nakocover yung kanyang uh, cervix. So, normally po kasi, kinukonsider nila yung vaginal delivery for those who had low-end placenta, placenta previa. If they have noticed na merong, nandun sila sa safe measurement, yung safe distance ng placenta mo at ng iyong cervix. So, um, of course, it will base on your doctor's discretion and decision kung ano po ba ang mas safe gawin para sa inyo. Of course, they will have to check kung nandun ba siya sa within the safe distance na uh, classification. Yes, na dapat i-consider ng mga doctor for you to be able to uh, proceed with normal vagina delivery. Whereas naman po, um, if you are in the grade 3 and grade 4, I, most of the time, uh, most pregnant moms are actually advised na para mag-undergo ng cesarean section. Actually, I've seen um, one of the questions here. Ito, according kay Miss Angeline Pacual, uh, 23, 23 weeks na po ako. Sabi ng OB ko, nakablock daw yung placenta ko sa cervix ko. So, it means it could probably be grade 3 and grade 4 based dito sa comment niya. Sana sa next ultrasound ko, mataas na kasi sabi niya, pag hindi daw, mas CS daw ako pag manganak ako. Actually, no, uh, normally, ang nakikita po kasi yan talaga sa sa ultrasound kapag mababa ang implantation ng iyong placenta. Kung meron kong dolan placenta or placenta previa. And then, they will have to recheck by mostly like 32 weeks kung titignan nila kung tamaas na ba ang inyong placenta. So, ang concern niya is siya daw ba is masisiye. So, uh, this one naman po is uh, tingnan natin sa pagsapit ng mga ika 30-32 weeks kung tataas na ba yung placenta niya. Then, uh, the, your doctor will have to decide whether you'll have to undergo CS. Um, as for me naman po, um, uh, kahit naman uh, ikaw ay uh, normal all throughout your pregnancy, uh, there still comes a time na talagang uh, you didn't expect that you will have to undergo cesarean section. So, sa mga cases talaga na katulad ng iba na parang na na preempt na ng doktor na na, na instill na sa'yo na kailangan mong mag cesarean section, I think you have to be physically, mentally, uh, emotionally prepared. The, what matters most is that um, yung safety mo at ng baby mo. Uh, it doesn't, uh, syempre, it matters na mag-iisip ka. Bakit siya naka-normal? Bakit ako hindi? But in my thinking kasi noon, nung nalaman kung may ilulang yung placenta ako, inisip ko na, okay, sige, alam ko, masisiis ako sa panganganak ko. Pero, God made a way 
And siguro dahil pinangalagaan ko maputi yung pagbubuntis ko. And I did all those things para mapataas yung placenta ko. And tumaas siya. And I was able to deliver normally. But for those na hindi naman talaga kayang mapataas ang kanilang placenta and they will end up to have uh, undergone a cesarean section, you are still blessed. What you have to do is to take good care of that pregnancy. Yung mapapartial uh, placenta previa man kayo or uh, uh, placenta previa totally. So what you have to do is take good care of your pregnancy. Mag, uh, magpahinga kayo. Ang inyong i-goal is hindi kayo mag-bleed. Yes, kasi any further bleeding or severe bleeding would cause you to to have a premature delivery ng inyong baby which is going to be very difficult po para sa inyo at sa inyong anak. Kaya ang advice ko talaga is uh, pangalagaan nyo. Kung nasabi man sa inyo na isisis kayo, then be it. And just be prepared financially mentally, physically, emotionally and um, at the end of the day, ang mahalaga lang naman talaga is safe ikaw at ang baby mo yes, be optimistic guys it's given by God para ma mapastrengthen pa ang faith mo at saka yung, yung trust mo sa kanya yes then next question is dami ha normal lang po ba na pag may lula yung placenta, yung discharge mo nag-iiba din po I'm not so sure kung ano bang klaseng vaginal discharge yung tinutukay ni Ma'am Lucelle Roldan. But for me po, um, when I was having that pregnancy back in 2019, the only thing I've noticed was that I had that bleeding po. Uh, it, it was parang bright red, uh, fresh bleeding talaga siya. That's why it alarmed me and I ran into my uh, ob ni And then, then I found out na meron akong lalayang placenta from the ultrasound eh, from the ultrasound that my doctor uh, did. Mm -mm. And after that po kasi, binigyan niya ako ng a lot of mga ng medications which I discussed in my first vlog about lalayang placenta. And uh, subsequently po, nung tinitake ko yung medication again to Faston for almost 2 months po two months, uh, I didn't have any abnormal discharge. Ni, hindi man lang ako nagkaroon ng brownish na discharge na ganun. Kasi nga, it controlled uh, any further, parang para magkaroon ako ng any bleeding. Kasi pinakapit niya talaga si baby sa aking sinapupunan. Yun yung purpose niya. So, I think for me, uh, pregnancy-wise, um, about uh, sa vaginal discharge, I think we have to be more cautious. Kasi ako noon talagang, sorry, pero parang paranoid ako. OA na OA ako at lagi kong tinitingnan yung, yung discharges ko sa panty ko. Kailangan, I have to make sure that I don't have that uh, brownish thing or any kahit pink na ano man lang. Kasi for me, um, what I did was right. Nung alam ko may bleeding ako, I immediately inform my doctor. So, if I were you, kung alam nyo na there is something wrong, may gut feeling kasi tayong mga moms, no, inform agad natin yung doctor kung kailangan natin na mag-pacheck uh, up or kahit magpa-virtual uh, consultation, gawin natin yun. Mm -mm. Kasi, dun din naman mas mapapalagay yung loob nyo uh, as a pregnant mom. Mm -hmm. Next, mm -hmm. CS po ako sa panganay ko. According to to Lawrence Uy. Si Espo, sa panganay ko, yun po kaya yung dahilan kung bakit nasa baba yung inunan. Okay. So, this one, I have answered it previously doon sa aking vlog na most uh, common risk factors bakit nagkakaroon na lola yung placenta. Isa doon is yung nagkaroon ka ng previous CS. So, I must say, pwede po siyang isa sa, sa causes kung bakit kaya nagkaroon ng lola yung placenta. At the same time, nandun din po yung kung kayo ay na dilatation and curettage, uh, niraspa, uh, nagkaroon kayo ng problema sa inyo uterus before, kung nagkaroon ng scarring, ganun, uh, yung age nyo po medyo matanda na din, yun. Those are some of the factors that uh, you can consider kung bakit kayo nagkaroon ng low line. Plus, according naman kay Miss Jo Jo's vlog, Hi Pom, I'm 24 years old. Low line placenta din po ako. Ano po ba ang maipapayo nyo? Pero ang sabi lang po sa akin ni Doc is magpahinga, no stress, huwag din po magtagtag. Ano po ba ang maipapayo nyo? Uh, itong sinabi sa inyo ng doktor, ito na to. Talagang, mm -mm. 
huwag kayong papaka-stress like what I've discussed a while ago. Then huwag kayong masyadong magpagod. Kailangan nyo magpahinga para hindi uh, lalong pumaba yung inyong placenta. Yes, and then eat nutritious foods, magpahinga, uh, kung ano yung mga vitamins na inirecommend sa inyo ng doktor, ituloy nyo lang. Mm. For further development ng inyong baby habang kayo nagpapahinga. And then, I think this would be the last. Last would be from MC Achu. Ma'am Chris, I'm from Pinaspo of Cebu. I'm new subscriber here. Sobrang linaw po kayo magsalita. Thank you. Sarap pakinggan. I'm pregnant 24 weeks and 4 days po. Tapos placenta previa totalis on. Okay. Ma'am, may chance po ba tumaas yung placenta ko? Kahit totalis na po. Patulong naman po. Sana po masagot niyo po ako. Ilang gabi na po kung di nakatulog. Kakaisip po. Natakot kasi ako. Eh, kasi first baby ko po ito at 35 years old na po ako. Okay, ma'am. MC Achu. So, ma'am, uh, thank you po kasi uh, kayo ay naging isa sa aking subscriber. Um, thank you din po kasi may mga naintindihan po kayo sa aking previous vlog and um o nga po na sabi niyo po sa akin na kayo may placenta previa totally so uh ma'am I don't have that final say po kung tataas po ba o hindi but for me what you have to do is really take good care of your pregnancy pa totalis or partial po iyan uh, ang kailangan nyo pong talagang isipin is huwag po kayong mag bleed so how to do that po kailangan nyo po talagang magpahinga kung inirecommend po sa inyo ng complete bed rest is sundin nyo lang po yes and iwas po tayo sa stress um, huwag po kayong yung nilaging nakakatulog ganyan kasi nararamdaman din po ng baby kapag kayo ay sobrang nag-aalala what you have to do is just to, is, um, pagpatuloy nyo na po yung pag-aalaga sa inyong sarili. Alam ko po na this must have been a very tough time for, sa inyo po at saka sa inyong asawa. Dahil syempre, 35 years old na po kayo and ito po yung inyong first, uh, pregnancy, inyo po yung first baby. But I do pray po na ma-overcome nyo ito. Kung hindi man po kayo makapag uh, normal delivery, uh, i-aim po natin yung safe uh, CS in case po. Mm -mm. Kasi what matters po ay yung uh, safety nyo at ng baby nyo. Yun po yun. Mm -mm. Honestly po, ang, ang magbuntis po talaga ay hindi, hindi siya madali. Sa totoo lang, hindi madali ang magbuntis. Uh, blessed lang po talaga yung iba na they have very smooth pregnancy from the start. And um, for me, I'm also blessed na kahit nagkaroon po ko ng low-lying placenta, uh, I was able to overcome it. Uh, I managed to, my placenta went up by 20 weeks. Siguro nakatulong din po talaga yung pagbibed rest ko at pag, uh, and refraining myself from from all the stress, from work, ganon. And ang isa sa pinaka natuwa po akong advice there was from my ob here in Singapore na sinabi sa akin ni Dr. Chen is huwag po akong mangamba. Sabi niya sa akin is um, most of the cases naman po ng lola yung placenta is tomatas. And according to him also, uh, I don't have to blame myself. That is the thing po. Don't uh, ever blame yourself na sabihin nyo kasalanan ko to kasi nagkaroon ako nito no. Hindi mo naman fault yun eh. Uh, it's just that ipinigay ito sa atin para maging uh, para matest yung ating faith and uh, for us to become stronger as a person as a mom, as a wife and as a believer ni God. Mm -mm. Uh, I told this in my previous vlog yung importance ng prayer na prayer at saka yung keeping on your faith and also laging uh, i-follow kung ano ba yung mga uh, advices and instruction ng inyong doktor yes so that's it guys ito po yung aking sigurong uh, last na vlog ko for everything about lola yung placenta gusto ko lang pong 
i-impart kung ano pa yung mga natitira kong uh, information and experiences na pwede kong idagdag regarding this low-lying placenta. And thank you po sa lahat ng mga nag-subscribe, sa patuloy pa mag-subscribe, and I'm really praying for all my co-low-lying uh, placenta moms out there yung naka-experience po at uh, mga nakaka-experience pa nakaka-experience ngayon na uh, kaya natin to tumaas man yan o hindi the most important thing is the safety of yourself and your baby yes so that's it guys thank you so much for watching sana po malami kayong natutunan sa vlog na ito and uh sa susunod ko pong vlog, may discuss din po ako doon sa mga tips kung paano po ba madaling mapuntis, ano po ba yung mga basic na vitamins na pwede nyo itake, no? Kaya ay pagkaya nag, uh, kung gusto nyo magbuntis or during your pregnancy. Those are some of the topics na pwede kong itiscuss sa susunod ko vlog. Yan po. Thank you!